Hello everyone, welcome to Tangle with Tracy Ann. Last week I did a video on ding splats. This week the video's name is Ding Bats. So if you don't know already, what is Ding Bats? If we look it up on the Wikipedia website, of course the first thing that jumps to my mind is the font. And I couldn't understand how that related. But when it describes it being an ornament in typography, and we can see here in this poem how Rick and Maria has adapted it now to Zentangle. And that's why it's Ding Bats with a Z, or I suppose most of you say Z. Okay, so I've already drawn a few frames and each of these different frames has a border. So basically what I want to do in each case is divide the frames up so that I can place tangles within them. The most common tangle you'll often see in dingbats is mukha. But in this case, I'm going to use flux. So some of the pieces will be under the frame and some will go over the frame. Once I've got my pattern drawn up, I can fill all the spaces with other tangles. And because it's already quite full, I think I'll just do the background with tipple. Then add a little bit of shading. So that's a simple square. I'm doing just little examples here to show you. And in this case, in a circle, I'll do some mulka. So on one side, I'm going to have the mulka going under the circle and on the other side on top. And then you can see I have two clear sections within that circle where I can do the tangles. So I'll just outline the frame and add a little bit of weighting to sections that are near the border and that just holds it down a little bit a bit like lead light now on one side I'm going to do poke root and the other side poke leaf and it almost has a bit of a yin yang feel to it
For the rectangle, I thought I'd divide it up, but I did mess up a little bit. The end result looks okay, but in so that I don't confuse you, I'll do it again on a piece of paper. So I'm splitting the rectangle down both ends and just rub out the lines so you don't get confused. This is what I didn't do. And make sure that the borders are within each section. And once you've done that, it'll be a lot easier. So now I'm going to have Mooka again and have it going from one section to another section, linking up. So I'm drawing the string and roughly doing where the mooka will be. I'm doing it in pencil because I want it to go under and over. And as you saw, I did get confused before even drawing with pencil. So I'm just going under and over and rubbing out what won't be seen. I know we don't usually use rubbers in Zentangle. You don't have to if you don't want to, but I'm just demonstrating it this way so you get the understanding of how we can do under and over. So there. You can see it linking from one section to the next section. I'm adding those little weighted sections again. Through the centre I'm going to do the tangle shattuck. Because the ends have such small sections, I'll only use tipple. It's a good filler for small areas. Because this is an ornament, we can choose any shape. It can be a regular shape 
or an irregular shape. So in this case, I thought we'd try a hexagon. So again, I'll draw a string and it's going under and over again. And you can see I've put Zynga on each end. Fill the areas with tangles. I've used a modified crescent moon in one section and jetties right in the center. And just a few little lines in those small sections. You can fill these sections with any tangle you like. For this triangle, I'm just going to do a simple S and turn it into another mocha. Now we're going to draw some triangles within the sections and do a little bit of paradox. Now for a love heart. And there you have a bit of a variation on the pattern, dude. I filled the centre with just simple stripes and again tipple. And now I'm going over the centre lines just to give a bit more interest to this pattern.
Here I've drawn an irregular shape and I've just put a bit of a string through it. Now I'm going to draw the pattern Rixty and I've had a conversation the other day with a member in my Facebook group talking about this pattern so I thought I'd do a little bit of a demonstration of it. You don't need the string like I have here but I thought I'd show you this way so that when we get to our actual pattern you can see um, where it goes under and over and that's why I'll be using a string today. So you can see we start with two strokes, put a line on the top like a T and make two little triangles. And then from there we draw an aura around that triangle shape at the end. So from here draw those two lines as if they're coming from underneath that triangle draw a line at the top make two little triangles on either side fill them in with black and then once that's done we'll draw an aura start at the top echo that top line and then come down either side until it joins the line and you can see from here how we can continue in a linear fashion so it can be a straight line or like today it's going to weave in and out of our actual irregular shape in and out of the borders I'm going to start this one off with a point so it just has a bit of an end to it. I forgot to work out my under and over so I'll just do that before I keep going.
I thought a star might be a little bit of fun. Just uh, do a bit of a string. I'm not doing one continuous string. I think I'll just do a couple of strings here and not do much with them. I'll just um, do little swirls at the end. You, you don't have to go under and over. You can put several over and several under. There's no rhyme or reason to it. The main thing is just have a bit of fun. They're just decorations. Use whatever tangles you like. You can make them as complicated or as simple as you like. For this oval shape I thought I might have a little bit of a play around with the Tangle Huggins.
a little bit of Knightsbridge in here. So there's a few examples of what you could do for your dingbats or ornaments. I imagine them as separating a, a nice page of writing. Here I've made a bookmark on a grey piece of card. And you can see I've done that shape at the top, then echoed the line to make the rest of the bookmark. And I've done one long thin mooka and it weaves all around that whole shapes. It intersects in sections and I've added some orbs on the outside of the border where it intersects. I've filled the sections within with a few different tangles. You can see toodles and floors, huggins, poke root, after I finished, I shaded the tangles and then added some highlights with a white charcoal pencil. I hope you had fun with that. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, do that so that you don't miss out on future videos. If you'd like to share your work, head on over to my Facebook group. There's a link below this video. I'm seeing lots of wonderful work from people all over the world. So that's fantastic. And until next week, stay safe. Thank you for watching and bye for now. To see more of my videos, head over to my YouTube channel or there are a couple of links here on the screen and the subscribe buttons below.